Okay, so there are only two questions in your question set, so uh, which is 33 and 36. Pause the video now, do it first, and we'll check the answer. Okay, so let's take a look together. Um, in question 33 is a very typical uh, internal resistance question, and you can see the circuit diagram is very simple, and uh, there's a Again, the graph is also very typical, also like the one that I asked you to do in the um, simulation. So it asks you to find the internal resistance of the battery and also the EMF. If you remember that, uh, that will be the slope equal to negative R, uh, small r represent the internal resistance. And the EMF will simply be equals to the Y in the set. So basically, you just have to find them. So here, uh, this equation, however, is a bit hard to read. Um, I would hope they provide the y-intercept to me, but it didn't. So I think um, it depends. I mean, if you really want to find more accurately, either you somehow would draw the grid or you can try to find the equation by what you learn in maps. So. Uh, if I try to find the data point, I think you have to find the data point first. Here, then this is x. What is this? One, two, three, four, five. And then, so this is three. Okay, it's kind of strange. And wow, what is this? We have five grid, so two divided by half. That is zero point four per per grid, right? Per small grid, and so that means it is two point four. That's very strange, and I don't know whether I can take these as these point. I think it's a little bit lower, but I will just take it anyway. Okay, so this. Is going to be two and ten minus zero point four, so that's going to be nine point six. Okay, so um, yeah, so that would be the that would be the coordinate, and then what's next is uh, find the slope. So slope equal to delta y over delta x which is 0 0.9.6 2.4 2 minus 8 and then use your calculator and I find negative 1.2 alright and so um, what you can you should do in the exam is that you can't just Say slope is one negative one point two, and then you suddenly say uh, the small r equal to one point two. You should um, also link it with the concept, which is slope is negative r. Okay, so this is a must to write this. Don't just simply write the conclusion. Okay, and as in for the y-intercept, um, you can use different skills you learn in maths, uh, which could be okay I think it's quite annoying so we can have uh, this equals to negative 1.2 all right I don't know whether how you call it in in mathematics so basically is you know this is a slope and then this is uh, this data point and then imagine there's a point called X and Y then, then you can still create the, you know, this this formula, and then you just have to solve it. So, I can do it. Negative two point four plus one point two x, and then you can put the negative y, and then how about I just rearrange two side, so. 9.6 plus 2.4 makes 12 minus 1.2x. Am I right? Yeah. 
and and that's it actually right because this is the y I mean this is the equation of y equal to mx plus c and that's still 1.2 I mean negative 1.2 actually which is what we find earlier and that's for how this small r equal to 1.2 and therefore y in the set is 12 so from that you can say that epsilon naught is 12 v then right this is v so v okay so this is how you can do it uh, this is what you need to do I think when the design of the graph is so bad that you can't simply draw a line to find the corresponding place but I think normally you can I don't think you need this math skills in physics normally in exam okay but I think it's something that you should know still as an IB student no, no matter what math you're taking okay so let's try the next question if you haven't done that uh, you may want to try it first and so now let me take a look uh, it asks to find the current and it said internal resistance of 1 ohm is all uh, written here already so it's good one thing you should pay attention is uh, it is positive this side and positive this side and that means they are all opposite direction so again like what we had this battery first battery or called primary uh, battery is charging this secondary battery so um, finding out the current oh okay so I think um, like what we learned in the previous uh, sub chapter 5.2 we learned about the Kerr law which is saying that the total sum of voltage or potential difference for instance, is zero in a loop this is a loop so we have 9V and you know this is a current that is always serious so this is only one loop right so 9 actually minus uh, this one which is 1I and then minus 4I and then when it reach to this first of all what minus 1I first and then these three again the current is giving energy to the battery so the current itself actually has voltage drop okay so it's also minus three here okay if you somehow swap the two terminal then when the current pass through this battery then they got the, the current got actually higher voltage so the battery is not being charged it's discharging instead but now what you have is when the currents go in it's going to the positive side so this is not usual so what you have is you are charging the these three volt cell instead so that's why minus three and then the last one is 2i and equal to zero okay so uh, let's simplify a little bit 9 minus 3 actually give you 6 and there are 5 6 7 and 8 i here and so i equals to 6 divide 8 which is 0.758 okay part B power dissipator in each cell okay so uh, interesting so in fact the uh, energy taken by the battery is so for the first cell uh, what equation you can use apparently is well there are normally three uh, choices you can choose for circuit so which is vi v square over r and i square r however when we talk about the cell there's no resistance you can refer to the cell because even though you may say hey there is uh, internal resistance can we use that you cannot because when we talk about power dissipated in each cell that actually means how much energy per second being provided by the cell in each second and that has actually uh, not much thing to do with the internal resistor here because it's more about how much voltage is that battery and how much current is flowing and the energy provided to this small internal resistor is not the all the things okay it's not it's not everything so what you can do uh, instead is you cannot use this to for battery you cannot because you you don't have out simply and you never get out 
for that. And if you really want to find the total sum of power provided by the cell, then you have to use VI simply. So uh, that's the tricky thing. And once you realize that, then the, the rest will be easy. So simply for the 9V that battery, you have 9 times 0 0.75. And that should give you 6.75 watts. And for another one, free volt that one, similar using this VI equation, then you have free. Um, however, one thing that you should do here is since the direction is opposite, right? So what you should do is negative. You make it negative for the voltage, negative three e uh, times zero point seven, which is the current, and that would be negative 2.25 watts okay that will be the answer for part b part c is asking you uh what is your comment for the answer in in b so uh basically i think what they are expecting is uh you, you can try to say this is negative this is positive and therefore this one is being charged and this one is discharging okay or in other words that means this is losing energy and this is gaining energy okay and that's all for the question however all right please wait me for a second uh, I do uh, find it is interesting to calculate some more things here okay I'm not sure if you ever wonder so what about if we try to calculate the power for each of them and think about this if you can find out all of them would 6.75 equal to which one i mean would, would it be all four of them or all four of them plus the battery or or this one this one and this one without the internal resistor what do you think all right and let's try to find it out right now okay it's very simple so let me get some space here like how we do normally we have uh, the equation of p equals to vi instead we can use maybe i square out because it's easiest because i is the same for everyone so then uh, for every of them you use 0 0.75 square times out then you can find the power so let me try it 0 0.75 you can try it also for the first one it will be zero this this resistor it will be zero 0.5625 same for this one 0 0.5625 watts and apparently for this one you just have to times 2 because R is twice so 1.125 and this is simply this double so I times 2 again which is 2.25 watts and if I try to add this four resistor okay uh, remember I did I'm not going to to the cell yet let's just try to see these four first right, one two three these four resistor first so that actually is four point five in total yeah and so you can see this is not the same as six point seven five unless you also add in this one all right, cause 4.5 plus this one, 2.25 would equal to 6.75. Okay, so that actually make so much sense now. Okay, I'll try to explain again uh, as a summary that basically this cell, or I should say this one actually, provides all the energy, all the power for uh, all the other things in this circuit, including number one this resistor number two this resistor number three this resistor number four charging this battery and number five this resistor and that all that's all uh, in a total of 6.75 watts in that case okay that's all for chapter 5.3